so many people think it's a love song uh, and and they think yeah. it's a love song because of the word desire mm -hmm. you know? and what i'm saying is well we've all got these desires we all just want to have what we want you know yeah. that's our desire but when yeah. you've got it well okay i've got it. that's fine thanks bring it now on to the next thing yeah now, what else do i want now what mm -hmm. else do i want you know and that that's what the the desire line was about but of course yeah People are they're, they're welcome to their interpretations, absolutely. And and, and I have written songs, um, many Ned songs that, that I've not at the time thought, I don't know what I'm on about here. I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. Hey. Hi guys. How are you? Hey, I'm I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. I'm okay. Good, Good yeah. man. I love the two new singles, man. I'm so excited. Um, how is it having a new band? It, it is such a surreal thing, you know. I mm. mean, I, I I've sat on my songwriting hands for 20 years, and and you know, our, our pandemic's been a bit of a nightmare in, in a lot of respects, you yes. know. But um it's made me write songs. So in, in one respect, great. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. Yeah. yeah. It is. It, I, that's one of the things that I noticed, you know, everybody's, everybody's creatively come out of this um, somewhat renewed almost, you know what I mean? Like it's get, giving everybody a kind of chance to like figure out what they've wanted to do that they haven't gotten to do in a while. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe change the way they, they did their, whole business you know what i mean like change the game a little bit for themselves did you feel that way too like did you have time to like kind of figure out what you really wanted to be doing well yeah i mean i, th I think the lockdowns have, have, have kind of served as a reboot haven't they everybody's yeah. kind of rebooted um and, and you know the, the way that life takes over um mm -hmm. you know i'm not a full-time musician these days I, I have to earn bread in other ways you know life takes over you know um and you forget things you can you can forget who you are Oh yeah, quite easy to forget who you are, you know. Right. And, and lockdown kind of forced me to face up to who I was because, uh, well, I was got locked in the house with myself, you know, <laughs> <laughs> with, with my family, of course. And, and, yeah, yeah. Okay, but what you know, um, and yeah, I, I very very quickly got got really itchy and twitchy and thought, what well, what am I going to do? Yeah. What exactly yeah. am I going to do? You know. Yeah. Um, in Ned's Atomic Dustbin, when, when we wrote songs, we used to write all of our songs, stood in a rehearsal room together. Uh, uh, it was always live writing, you know, on the spot. Wow. And, and I would come up with pretty much all of the lyrics there and then while the guys were patiently play, playing away, you know. Wow. Um, so, so I kind of, I guess, convinced myself that that magic, if I couldn't access that magic, and Neds have never been able to access that magic since, really, because we're all way too busy and all over the place. Right. But maybe I was never going to write another good song, you know. Maybe that's never, ever going to happen. Wow. And then, and then my acoustic guitar that I'm absolutely atrocious at playing um, is in, in, in the corner of my study, and it starts going, I'm going to have a play with me, mate. <laughs> Come, come and show me how rubbish you are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome, though, that you guys wrote live, like you wrote live and on the spot, because, you know, I'm always interested in the creative process of a musician, like whether they hear like the lyrics first, or whether they hear, you know, um, uh, music first, you know, when they decide it. But I've never uh, talked to anybody who's actually written on the spot with his bandmates in the room. So when when you couldn't do that, when everybody got so busy, is that what kind of took away what you felt like you were missing to write more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it literally, you know, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to say, but it, it literally felt like there's there's kind of a magic has been removed. Because, right. You know, it, it's not a quick process necessarily, although sometimes right. it is a very quick process. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we wrote Kill Your Television in about 45 minutes wow. on a Saturday morning with a hangover, you know. But, <laughs> But other songs, they, they need an hour, two hours, three hours, two days, yeah. you know. Right. Um, and you need people stood in a room together with the time to let these things come about, you know. Yeah. And, and when you don't have that time, it, you know, you, you kind of, well, I guess for me, probably for the other guys, you kind of think, 
don't start on this because yeah, we're never yeah. going to finish it, you know? Right. It's yeah. Great. It's crazy though, because like I, I totally can relate to that kind of thing. Like I, when, when I'm writing stand up comedy, I, I do write by myself, you know, because it's a solo thing anyway. But I love being in a writer's room and collaborating on a sketch or a product. Like there's nothing like being in the same room with other funny people. But I very rarely did that when I would leave, you know, you leave that room and nobody's around and you're like, I'm not going to think of this shit by myself. You know, it's such yeah. a weird vibe. But like, how did you overcome that to write your own stuff? Like by, by yourself during pandemic? Well, it, I mean, it was it was all a bit of an accident, you know, because um, mm. I guess my part of the Ned songwriting thing would, would be that I would be inspired by the riffs and the drum beats and, and the chord sequences right. that the other guys came up with, you know. So so they would come up with stuff that would inspire me to 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 want to sing to it and to write words to it, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess something that I'd well convinced myself about was that I couldn't inspire myself, mostly because I'm an atrocious guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but 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 just that business of being so close to if I come up with an idea, well, how's my idea going to inspire me to do to do something? It, it felt like a bit right. of an anathema to me. It felt like a bit of a dead end. And so the thing was, hmm. I didn't set out to write songs. I, I did not set out to write songs. Hmm. I picked up the acoustic guitar because I was bored and I wanted to do <laughs> something, you know. Right. And then yeah. luckily, just just at the same time, I'm a bit of a technological luddite. Mm -hmm. Not not too bad, but I'm not I'm not bang up to date, you know. And now you're here with us, so I appreciate that. That's that's yes. pretty great. Yeah, so, so I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. At least. <laughs> but, um, just at the right time, someone said, "You know what, John? Get this get this app, this top line app uh, by Abbey Road Studios, on your phone, okay. four track. Wow. Um, and have a play with this. Well, of course, I'd never progressed any kind of a guitar idea or anything anywhere mm -hmm. because I'm not very good at singing and playing at the same time. Okay. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm very seriously limited in, in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, I started playing a few little ditties and riffs and things that I thought sounded okay, purely for my own enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And then with my little four-track app, I was able to add a layer. Wow. And that made that idea move somewhere. Still not – I still wasn't thinking, well, I'm writing songs here. Yeah, I was just yeah. having fun, you know, things that sounded like, I don't know, it remind me of, like, the last hour on the beach at the end of a sunny day or something. I'd, I'd have these kind of – yeah vibes about stuff yeah I, I was writing them for the sake of writing them not 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 thinking i'm writing songs and not even thinking about lyrics to begin with right but but you know it, it just kind of evolved and evolved and my phone filled up with ideas and then i suddenly thought you know what yeah maybe one of my bandmates might be interested oh, nice. and, I, and i deliberated for such a long time trying to think of who i could work with right um, dan dan should have throttled me when i when i finally asked him because he was hidden in plain sight. There, there, there he is, the guy in the band who can play anything. Right. Anything and everything. Yeah. The other guy that was in the room in the Neds who wasn't coming up with guitar riffs. So Dan and I were the two people who weren't bringing guitar riffs into the room. Okay. Dan was doing the drums. I was doing the vocals. Everyone mm -hmm. else was doing guitar. Mm -hmm. So the two guys who don't do guitar, um, let's work together. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> see, see, see where that goes. Were they um, like finally? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, you, when Dan said, "Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do some songs. Send me some, send me some stuff." And the, the stuff I sent him, my God, you know, mm. I, I wouldn't have liked to have been on the receiving end of that because <laughs> <laughs> so badly recorded and out of time and badly played and so on and so forth. Yeah, but, but it then, must have know, been so refreshing during the, the during like a, a real kind of a bummer situation, like the whole lockdown thing. You must have been like, oh my god, anything is great. Anything, <laughs> anything creative coming from you know our, our other bandmate is great. Let's do this. Well, I, I guess that's the case because I think it was about four days it took him to to come back to me with uh, with one full full song great. instrumental. Wow, like the whole the whole thing. Here you go. What do you think of this? I'm like, yeah. what do I think? This yeah. might be a hard question to even answer, but do you remember like a certain lyric where you got a spark after you were writing for a while? Where you're like, this is it. I got a thing here and I could, you know, really, really build a song off of it. Um, well, I, I, I mean, a couple of the earlier ideas, I'd, I'd get like a line of, of vocal. Um, mm -hmm. One of them um, is a song called uh, Apart Together. And mm -hmm. um, I was thinking I'd, I'd lost my mother a year or so before. And uh, um, I was thinking about my mother and, and, and the loss, you know. And mm. um, 
I thought about how people share loss. Anyway, I, sure. I, I put a couple yeah. of chords together, the most basic couple of chords you could you could come across. Mm -hmm. And and this line came about. But but then I I, I kind of thought, you know, I'm loath to try and develop this because I'm gonna ruin it if I do it on my own. I'm uh, gonna ruin this, it's it's gonna come to nothing. So yeah, that's nice. I've got a line. Mm -hmm. So I send that to Dan and 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 Dan fills in all the spaces instrumentally. Right. You know, I, I say to him, oh, well, you know, I, I kind of quite like a, a bit of a bass drum and clap kind of vibe, something like right. this, you know. Entirely different to anywhere Ned's had gone before as well. Oh, um, wow. But then Dan, Dan came back to me with, okay, well, how about this for, for, for a chorus? And how about this for the middle eight? And here's the drums and we'll, we'll, we'll do this and we'll do that. Yeah. And it came about very, very quickly. And then, of course, when that comes at me, that magic has come back then, hasn't it? Because I'm in that situation where I can be inspired again. Yes. Yeah. By other you... people's work, you know, and it doesn't feel like my work. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you find it, do you find it kind of frustrating or even did you find it frustrating that like you would be able to hear exactly what you wanted musically, but couldn't maybe play it on your own? Or did you like the collaboration more? Well, it's a bit of both really. I mean, mm -hmm. th that frustration with myself is long standing, you know, I can um, I can kind of tell, but I mean, it seems yeah. like you know you've you've kind of dealt with it though. Well, well, I've dealt with it recently, haven't I? So I've had a damn long yeah. time to try and live with it. You know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good but, point. Um, but 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 yeah, I mean, I, I I can't say how satisfying it is for even just a half an idea that I've that I've um, originated. Yeah. So I've ticked off. Right. to turn into a full song because because I didn't do that in Ned's either, you know, because right, right. I was waiting for tunes to inspire me. It didn't, it never originated with me. Mm -hmm. So the satisfaction mm -hmm. of one of those ideas becoming a full song, that in itself was, was just an enormous deal for me. It's a massive yeah. big deal. And and to, to have writing credits 50, 50 on, on all, on all the songs on, on, on our full album, yeah, it's just a place I never imagined I'd ever get to. So, so wow. extremely satisfying, you know. But, yeah. but also, I've, I've loved collaborating with Dan. We, we, yeah. We're on the same page. We just are. I never realised we would be. I never thought we wouldn't be. Right. But I, just, I just never. <laughs> ever, I never yeah. ever thought. You know. Right. That's a great feeling when, you, especially when you find somebody that you just click with immediately, and you're like, "Oh, this is kismet. I don't even want to mess with it. It's perfect." Yeah. Absolutely. There, there, we've had a couple um, artists on I, who just kind of describe it the same way. And I feel like I've, I've done the same thing where, you know, you don't necessarily go, I'm going to be creative at this point in time. And that's how I'm going to do it. It just, it really does depend on uh, when you're inspired and what you're inspired by in the moment. And it's kind of hard to reconcile that or to explain to people. They're like, how come you haven't made anything new? And it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to force it. And it just comes to me in a different way. But it isn't, is that, is that like, do you find that frustrating or do you let it happen naturally and you're fine with it? I've kind of learned to, to just wait for the waves to come in, you know? Yeah. You have to, because otherwise, to. I mean, that's just how you, you know, work as an individual. And the, and the, the thing is that I've also discovered, I mean, especially during lockdown, you mm. know, you're in a house, there's, there's a limited number of things you're doing in a house. Yeah. And 85% and <laughs> of them are mundane, you know. Yeah. But you know, I'll be doing, I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you specifically. Um, right. Yeah. But you're in the middle of something mundane and, oh, and an idea comes to you and you're like, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. You like break down the wall like the Kool Aid guy trying to run into the room to get it down on paper. Yeah. It's like, where's my phone? Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. Help me Everybody you're in yeah. the room with is like, where'd he go? Why'd he leave? <laughs> what, yeah. is there? what does he know that we don't? I'll just, I'll just put the food on the table. Where are you going? Like, yes. No, I, I, would, I would never do that. But, uh, you know, it's the inconvenient times, it'd just be like, that's, that's it. No, oh, yep. damn. Why am, why am I shaving while this is occurring? Yeah. Yeah, why yeah. Am I... <laughs> What's worse is, I've, I mean, I'm guilty of doing that when I'm driving and drive. Like when I'm driving, when you're driving by yourself, it doesn't matter what the hell you do. But I've been driving with friends and an idea will come to me and I'm like driving and also trying to get it down in my notepad. And they're like, Do you need me to do anything? Take the wheel? Do you want me to write this down? I'm like, no, oh, you won't understand. And so, like, I don't understand going to the hospital either. So I'm going to need you to put the phone down. <laughs> and you have an idea. And I'm like, It probably isn't, but it might be something. And I don't know. I would think, especially with you, I feel like somebody would say something and be like, "Stop talking! I'm gonna lose it." <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. You're like, "Don't yeah. say it," and and you do lose it pretty quickly. I always think of an idea like, uh, remember the old Roadrunner cartoons? 
where yeah. he would like yeah. meep meep and then disappear and there'd be that cloud of the roadrunner left that's what it feels like when i have an idea and it's gone i'm like i can <laughs> still kind of see it it's in a puff of smoke <laughs> but it left and that's yeah. all i can get my hands on it's weird yeah. well the, the um, other the other pain is that is the one where you, you probably don't realize it at the time or for myself you you come up with an idea of, i'll come up with a, a vocal idea or a, a lyrical idea that's a, a melody yeah and, and what i'm not realizing when i'm re, re, recording it onto my phone is that um the rest of it in my imagination is in here it's not coming out of my mouth <laughs> so, <laughs> so the bit coming out of my mouth is just like uh i don't know uh fifth of it or something and the, the imagination part is kind of like yep <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can't it, capture that on the phone you know yeah, yeah it took me a long time comedically to figure out like i would have an idea and i would say it in a cadence and in a way in my head that that would like exactly the way i needed it and then when i would go to write it down i wouldn't write it down the same way i would try to like you know clean it up or whatever and then i go back to it later and be like that's not fucking funny at all <laughs> like I have, I have no idea what i wrote here or why and then but yeah it really took me a long time to trust like the nuts and bolts of what i've said in the moment and then that was it yeah but, you're yeah. editing the magic right because yes. like that, that imagination is the magic it's the, it's the intangible yeah of what yeah. of what it is and you got to always said in the that. moment yeah it's it's a real weird the, the pen to paper or pen to or, or you know brain to phone or whatever it is especially when it's on the phone because you do tend to like self-edit more when i'm typing more than when i used to write down because when you're writing you know you're trying to do shorthand so you you yeah. do kind of write the way you you talk but then when you're on your phone you're like oh let me auto correct it and let me you know <laughs> spoof it up a bit and i'm like oh there's none of this looks right uh yeah, <laughs> That never when when I when I was writing with the Neds, that never ever would have worked. If I'd have had a keyboard, if I'd have, if I'd have been popping away on a phone, on my phones, I'd show you yeah. how it was. But if I'd have been tapping away on a laptop or something, right? It happened, you know, I'd I had a pile of sheets of paper all around my feet, and and, and I'd never find I'd, I'd hopefully find my pen quick enough. Yeah, and, and I'd be like, mm, quick, get it down, get it down, get it down. Yes. You know? Um, but no, I love that you, you mentioned. You don't this. think. Yeah. yeah. I love yes. that you mentioned the pile of paper because it's still something like I have notes written all over this desk on different sheets of paper because I'll never break that habit. I, I've, I've, it's too familiar. I love it too much. I've got to always have stuff in my pop. We, I was out the other day. I went to, went to a concert <clears throat> and um, I'm just standing there. I'm talking to somebody and literally like sheets of paper fell out of my jacket pocket. <laughs> and they were just like, "Are you, what is that? And I was like, oh, if, just notes like to myself and i'm like picking stuff up I'm, like didn't even know i had it on me but yeah same i feel like that i look weird. like a serial killer like if you would have come into my office like if you look at the stuff it's just scribbles of scribbles like in different areas and you're like yeah nobody will ever decipher this if i drop dead right now yeah <laughs> you yeah. feel like lost to the ethers and god forbid they do <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got one big regret about all those writing sessions Mm. I, I should have kept those pieces of paper. Yes. Uh, yeah. Should have kept them. It was like, oh, it's all right. I know what it is now. I remember it now. That's fine. Done in the bin. Yeah. I'm going oh, to think, man. oh, man, you know, should yeah. have kept those. But, Do uh, you find you're more sentimental about that kind of stuff now than you were back then? Yes, but that's because I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, it's it's fine. Nobody's, you know, <clears throat> I, I I'm like, I was thought I was going to be one of those people that was like, fearful of getting old you know what i mean or, or like i wasn't going to handle it well and i cannot wait to wear the same sweater every day like my great you know what i mean like <laughs> whatever older people i imagine older people do that kind of shit but like you know like i just i i feel like i can't wait to not care as much about any of that stuff anymore i don't does that make sense <laughs> well, it's old think, age to me i don't know yeah I, I, i'm kind of i think i'm beginning now to start um, thinking about um, what slippers I'm going to get, you know, what, what um, on the evening table. jacket I'm going to get, the pipe maybe. I love it. It's I, very I, distinguished. So, so, so I so love that you just said the evening jacket thing because literally I was in a store not too long ago and I saw like like something that you would wear at night. You know what I mean? Like so, and I was like, one day, like <laughs> I'm not there. Like I, I felt like I couldn't pull it off. But I was like, that's a very professorial kind of like, you know, evening kind of, oh, I can't wait. It's going to be great. 
It's going to be turtleneck and a blazer. That's what you're looking for. Turtleneck blazer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I'm, at the moment, I'm, I'm watching my watching my children get bigger and bigger and bigger, mm-hmm. and, and briefing them on the fact that they need to be at least another foot taller. Um, <laughs> walk up the so they, they can piggyback me to the pub, um, and, and, and just come and fetch me home afterwards. I can oh, sit in the corner good. and just grump at people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to all this. We, I mean, we all assume we're going to live a long life. We, we, we hope so, don't we? But you know, oh, I know. Not I've to, I've to, yeah, I've got to stay healthy now, so yes. that I can be yes. doing all this stuff later. You know, absolutely. That's mm-hmm. the thing, though. Too like, I did not. I think I, I realized at one point during the pandemic that any kind of dream of health that I had, had accumulated over the years went away in mm, months, like in the matter of months, because I was just. I know you, you know, you got, you get a little depressed staying inside most of the time or whatever. And after a while I was eating everything. I was like the hell with staying healthy, (laughs) just shoving cake, food, cheese, all the stuff didn't matter anymore. Well, you know, the, the the antidote I had to that was, um, was educating um, kids at home. Oh, wow. The most stressful thing I have done in the last (laughs) four decades. (laughs) (sighs) I lost weight. Uh, It's just like, Man, because it because your school days, yeah, this is rock and roll, guys. Rock and roll, <laughs> old schooling. But um, you know, you, it's like your school day finishes at three thirty. Why are we still doing this at six o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, that's got to be frustrating. Uh, but but you know, it's, it's also good because it kind of gets you into their world. And yeah, that, that's, yeah. Uh, that's a rare thing, I think, in our in our times. Well, Oh you yeah, know? you don't, what kind you don't of... enter their world very much. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, they were at school and that was school and whatever. Yeah, yeah, you leave them at school and then you have the PTA parent teacher thing going on, you know, and then that's it. That's the most you get out of it. And you're like, oh, the cool, they did a drawing, or oh, they got a good grade on a thing. Yeah, um, yeah. clearly I don't have kids because I just explained it with the words thing and, and <laughs> PTA. I was like, yes, no, no. and you go to school, and yeah. It's, it's still a thing, and, and most of it is still an unexplained thing as well. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. All right, so I got it. So, yeah, you're still wondering what this thing is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, instead of, like, I did a drawing, it's like, um, Dad, how are you with algebra? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I always felt like I should not. I mean, there's many reasons I shouldn't have kids. But like it was uh, one of the main ones is I'm just like, I don't know how to help them with the, for things like that because I was terrible. I mean, I'm I'm the worst math student ever. Like once algebra hit and then algebra two and all that other stuff, I was like, I'm out. That was it. But it's even worse than that now. I feel like I don't know if your kids are young enough, but like my niece and nephew, there's a thing over in the U.S. They're teaching common core math makes mm. no sense to me. <laughs> none it's it's not what we were taught so like yeah. it's like five plus four i'm like yeah that equals nine they're like no it equals ten what <laughs> that, equal 10? that what? doesn't equal ten yeah they have to round up they're not taught to be exact anymore like it's wow. it's so weird so because 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 that being exact won't matter in in the future will it i want to no. be an accountant well it's there about you know <laughs> i'll just round it up it's uh, 1.75 billion, but let's call it two. Yeah, they, they, they had to make they had to make up somehow for the four years of inept presidency that we had. They were just like, nothing's exact anymore, and uh, <laughs> facts don't matter. So make it up as you go along, kids. Christ. We'll figure it out later. Any one of you can be president. Literally, it doesn't matter. For the love of God, one of you, please run. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> oh God, yeah. What, what kind of student were you when you were younger? Um, I I was the one who could always do better because uh, I was too distracted. Mm-hmm. So I was I, I wasn't naughty. Yeah. Um, I got by reasonably well. So I was I was reasonably intelligent. I'm I'm mm-hmm. no bright spark, but I got away with lots. I really got away with a lot. Mm-hmm. So so. If I had been teaching me, I would have been quite annoyed with me. <laughs> yeah. I would have like, come on, you lazy little. <laughs> I know. Stop, stop twanging your your ruler <laughs> and inter- <laughs> interrupting the lesson, and then whenever, but I don't see you do it, so I can't prove it. Can't prove it was you. <laughs> so everyone else gets blamed. Uh, so I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't the, I wasn't the ideal student, and I hated school from day one. Yeah. To, to the last day, it's it's a crying shame, you know. It yeah. is a crying shame because 
well, we all know, don't we? Oh, and I don't want to sound like, here we go, more rock and roll. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of like, it's only you that's getting anything from it in the end anyway. You're not yep. doing it for anyone else. You're doing yeah. it for you. And I'm like, I hear myself saying this stuff and I'm just like, if you'd said that to me back then, I'd have been going, like, nah, 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 nah. yeah, nah, 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 whatever. You yeah. Know, uh, but, you know, then again, I think we're all entitled to be young. We're all entitled to, to, to be thinking, that means nothing to me. I just want to yeah. go and play, you know. I agree. Yeah. And it's weird because it's like you're not supposed to, you know, I think, you know, everybody thinks the educational system is kind of weird. You know what I mean? And, and it's and we've learned the craziest thing about it is that we've learned over time how ineffective it is and how ineffective it can be. And we've gone like, yeah, but we're still just going to plow ahead. And, you know, and then that's and that's it. We we're like, yeah, no, it's it kind of doesn't work. But also, what are you going to do? I, um, I but I felt like. To... Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was going to say, I think it was made to make people conform into like yeah. into a job. And we're talking to three people in these boxes that have never having conformed to society's regulation kind of made right. their own path. Like, yeah. Right. I always, two- yeah. I always wondered what it would have been like if they did it kind of like, I mean, you know, you obviously can't focus on every student individually, but I feel like, you know, uh, addressing that some people learn differently. I probably would have been the best way to do it and not put them in like, you know, these separate class or like, you know, turn their desk around and made them face the corner. Um, um, you know, they were being disruptive <laughs> or whatever, but like, like that kind of a thing, like it is kind of interesting. Cause I, I was always in like, you know, I was always in like the honors classes or whatever the hell that is, but I always struggled regardless because I had like probably unchecked ADHD or whatever the hell it was that I didn't know what was going on, but I always tried to focus and force myself to do these things that I just wasn't, my brain wasn't, you know, didn't learn that way. But it yeah. doesn't matter because they're like square peg, round hole. I got to hammer this in. So maybe he gets a job pumping gas. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I yeah. think on John's side of the pond, right? Don't they give you a test at a certain point and tell you what you're supposed to be going towards? They, oh, they do, you know, and, and it's kind of like um, the last year of, of primary. You know, and, and I, you know, I feel bad. I feel bad um, doing the education system down because, you know, the people who, who cop for it worst are, are the teachers. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, the, and the theory, the theory goes that um, they do try and um, look after people who learn in different ways. It is, they do. it is part of the, the process supposedly. However, yeah. it's much, much more important to test them and find out how bad or good they are. Yeah. Let's, let's not do anything mm-hmm. about it, but let's right. at least know. Right. So let's right, spend, right. Let's spend, let's spend a whole year getting them ready for a test so that we can know how, how good or bad they are. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then when they go up to the next school, up to high school, mm-hmm. um, let's just throw that out the window, give them a <laughs> month, and they'll show us how good they are. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and what's worse is that the student knows how bad or good they are too, and which and you can see the shift in the teachers because like, all right, well, we're going to leave these ones behind, and then we're going to focus on – but, you know, it's, it's not even – that you're right. It's not the teachers. It is the educational system because even some of my friends have – have bailed on, you know, teaching to an extent because they can't do it the way they want to. So, you know, they're constantly being watched, constantly being restricted and monitored. So even when they do go to help, you know, an individual or try to set it up in a way that works, you got the higher ups, like, nah, we got a, we got a time schedule and we got stuff to do and you can't do that kind of shit anymore. It's weird. The role of a teacher these days is just it's just got no respect. And and no. one of the one of the problems is that you know, these days it used to be that the biggest problem that, that teachers would have, I think, in schools would be the troublemakers themselves, right? So yeah. it's dealing with that troublemaker, getting getting them to stop disrupting other things, so mm-hmm. on so forth. Yeah. These days the biggest problem they've got are parents. Oh the yeah. They have a parents. You Absolutely. see something wrong about little little Billy. Oh, he's a you know, he needs to change his behavior and and the parents are there on you can't say that. About yeah, yeah. Child, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, it's it, it's you know, these are sweeping generalizations. There are some no, you're right, parents though. Parents out there, great parents out there. They're all sure. way better than I am, you know. But um <laughs> but you know, um it's it's the kind of attitude that you take your kids to school and that's where they learn how to behave. Yeah. Oh no, it isn't. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
When you, do you I want to ask you a little bit more about when you were younger, though, too. So what was was music the thing you always wanted to go into? Or did you have like another passion at the time and you were kind of deciding between, you know, the, the other ones? Well, I, I, I'm an accidental singer. It's a total accident, really. I, really? I wanted to be an actor. That, wow. was, that was what I wanted to do. Really? Um, and, the, and the main reason I wanted to be an actor was because I hated myself. I just, hmm. I thought I was just. You wanted to pretend like to be other myself. people? Sorry? You wanted to pretend to be other people? Yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, you know, if I'm an actor, I've got license then to go be other people and, and, and not have to stick around with myself all the time and, you know. Wow just lead, lead a different kind of life. And that sounds, I mean, I don't think that's unusual. No. <laughs> you know, I think, yeah. I think there's a lot of kids who are uncomfortable in their own skin, you know. Right, right. But anyway, long, long story short, that, that was my ambition was to be an actor. And um, I think it's difficult when you're a child because you haven't lived enough to be a good actor. You don't, you don't know. You can't wow. pretend to do things that you haven't done or have yeah. no, no sight of, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think I was that great a talent in in, in the acting uh, world. Did but, you do um, school plays to, and stuff? Well, yeah. I, so so I, when I left school, I went to to college and I majored in in theatre studies, and hmm. I, I went to an audition for some drama schools and stuff. And and I did well in the auditions because the the ones I went for were kind of um, they, they they were ones where you improvise on the spot. So I guess no great shock that songwriting was that kind of way as well you know yeah yeah um but i but i messed up completely my because my grades were rubbish and and i, I got these places but i couldn't take them up because my grades were rubbish wow. but um as part of that process um there was a that they put on a play and i wanted a lead part and and the only way i could get a lead part was uh if i volunteered to to, to be this guy who sings you know so mm -hmm. it was um threepenny opera that, that the production was <laughs> Bertolt Brecht's um, Mickey yeah, Taylor yeah. out of Beggar's Opera, and and they wanted someone to play Mac the Knife, but oh. Mac the Knife had to sing, right? That's yeah, yeah, that's great. It's quite cool because because Threepenny Opera, it, it, it's not operatic in the slightest. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite kind of, you know, it's it's very lo-fi and very gritty, um, yeah. but no one else wanted no one else wanted to sing and no one else wanted to 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 take that thing up, and I was a bit worried that. Here we go. I'm, I'm kind of I'm going down the high school musical route, and that certainly ain't where I want to go. I mean, you know, I <laughs> yeah. pretended when I was at school, I pretended that my voice had broken before it did, just to get out of the school choir. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'd, I'd go. Oh. <laughs> and eventually, they believed me, and it was like, yeah, okay. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, that's you know, great. But yeah, so so. I, I did this production as Mac the Knife, and I mm -hmm. loved I loved the uh, smell of the grease paint and the performance side of it. Yeah, so I got a real taste for the stage. Nice at that point. <laughs> um, and then one thing led to another because I was at, at a college. It's that age when other people are playing guitars and things, and they're forming bands, and there's there's certain movements going on. Right, like indie rock and alternative rock were like to the four uh, and you get kind of swept up in it and I ended up being a singer in a band. That's awesome. That's a great, a pure, I, pure accident. Yeah. But did you have any like early influences when you were going to the band or like somebody that you emulated? Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of scary stuff at the start. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, I don't know. I'm not knocking them now. I'm not knocking them, but, um, no. but sisters of mercy was my, that oh, was wow. my massive, massive um, thing when I when I started college. So I was a proper full on golf. Oh my god, that's wow. great! Yeah, yeah. And I, I, so I awesome. tried to sing really deep <laughs> you know, and, and dead moody and whatever. Yeah. And then, and then, then I then I thought I was Ian McCulloch. Oh, um, okay. So I just started looking like him and trying to sing like him <laughs> as well. And but, those were uh, early bands that you were in. Well, there was there, were, there was only one band before. Neds, we were called mm. White Rabbits, okay. uh, and 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 we were we were rubbish, mm -hmm. you know, proper rubbish. But but when you're that age, you are rubbish, and and I, th I suppose the thing was that we we got started and and worked started working our way through the being rubbish phase uh, at a at a reasonably early age, you know. Right. Um, and we did it in public. That was the other thing was that we we didn't matter how rubbish we were, we still did a gig, mm -hmm. so our mates could see how rubbish we were as well. Right. We could we could read their faces and see how rubbish we are as well, you know. 
<laughs> uh, and it's kind of lessons learned, you know. It's 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 sort yeah. of part of the whole business of of learning how to perform and how to how to write songs that people engage with, you know, because because that's the big lesson, isn't it? It's you you can you can be a great musician, you can be a great lyricist, you yeah. know. But at the end of the day, if you have a career at it, it, it all hinges on how other people react to it, how right. other people engage with it. You know, do do other people like it? You might love it. Yeah, and be the only person on the planet that does. Well, that's okay, but right. don't don't expect a career because <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you need an advice. audience. Yeah. Do you do you remember a moment, whether it was in the writers with with your band or on stage, where you felt like, oh, this is it, I found my own voice. Well, oddly enough, yeah, um, the the lineup of the band wasn't always the same. We did used to have um, a, a female backing vocalist in it as well. Um, nice. my, my first band mm -hmm. did, and, mm -hmm. and so I kind of, I don't know why, kind of followed the same formula with with Ned's, and um, and so I think part of it was my nervousness about being centre stage and front person on on their own, you know, mm -hmm. taking all the all the all the attention, you know, but. Um, there came a point where um, it just it just we weren't progressing with 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 a backing vocalist in the band and and the female voice just wasn't kind of working in amongst it all. Mm -hmm. um, so she she left and we did we did our first gig. It was in a very small place. I remember the gig really well. We had the car running outside because we were terrified that the Hell's Angels in the in the bar were going to kill us as soon as we finished because <laughs> because they obviously didn't take to our music very much. But but that was my very first gig. As as the only singer, you know, in the band, yeah. and and I and I and I kind of had this light bulb moment part way through that. And the song, the song that made it really obvious was "Grey Cell Green." That's yeah, you that's know, uh, that's absolutely one of my favorites that you that, guys. You do. know, I mean, that song has done so much for us. We wrote it really early on, and God only knows how we did it at that age. Yeah, you know, we were yeah. very young when we wrote that. Right, um, and and bef before in the original for, format of the band, um, it was quite a busy song. So some of the stuff got, got a bit lost. Some of the hooks weren't mm -hmm. that evident, you know, they hadn't got a lot yeah. of room to breathe. Yeah. Um, once we simplified it a little bit more, um, then then all those little riffs started um, popping up all around it and, and it became a sing song. Yeah. Song. And that and, and that's the song really on all of the all of the early tours that we, we did with with the bigger bands. That was the song that kind of won the other band's audience is over. Nice. And it's weird, you know, because at the time I didn't really, I didn't really clock that. Right. I really think, oh, Grace Hill Green's the one that's doing the business for us. That's what I was going to ask. I, I always feel like that's the case. Like, like bands will write a song and they'll be like, oh, the one that that hits and connects with people the most, they don't even think of. They're like, yeah, yeah, we we thought it was going to be this band, uh, this track, but it's not. And 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 the states, um, you, you guys over there, that you were the ones who kind of really made that patently obvious in the end because because grace or green on on um 120 minutes mm -hmm. got 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 a great rotation it wasn't even a single in this country wow it, was, it wasn't a single it was on our first ep before we even signed to to sony music mm -hmm. it was on our very first ep as a, a part of the four track our ingredients ep yeah um it was one of the best songs we got at the time but we i don't think any of us really thought well that's our best song what do you think it is about it that connects with people so much? It's it's so hard. Um, yeah. Um, because lyrically, it's a great song. I mean, it's obviously catchy, and everybody can connect with it. Um, but it's one of those things that I also feel like I always wonder as an artist. Like I've seen different interpretation of the lyrics. You know what I mean? Over time, yeah. do you like it? Like, like, okay, you know what? This means something different to somebody else, or do you have that thing in your? In you that's like actually it's about this but you know what i mean do you feel like you want to correct them well i mean that's that's a great example grace or green is um mm -hmm. because you know it, it, it's really it's really odd at the time um and, and again this is really early days for ned this is yeah um i got a bit of a bee in my bonnet about lots of things because you do at that age you know mm -hmm. you scream against the, the yeah. olds about all kinds of stuff <laughs> and um this was at the time when when I'd, I'd just heard something about um, pumping chemicals into into livestock, yeah, and, and, and overfishing and all this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, but also, I'd kind of thought we well, were all doomed because the people who were, who were kind of fighting for the planet at that time, and you know, 
how pertinent is this now? But anyway, um, <laughs> people were kind of fighting the case back then. They they were they were marginalised people. People were just thought, well, you're a hippie. You're right. you're just a, you're just a hippie. You are. You know, yeah. you want to save the planet. You you want to dance with the fairies. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want to read your horoscope all day. Right. Uh, you, you know what I mean? And so. When, when we did Grace or Green, I was kind of thinking, well, you know, there's a lot of talk, but it's all the wrong kind of talk. It's kind of like, oh, it's in the trees. You yeah. know, it's uh, it's all around us. It's it's all these kind of things. And what I wanted to say at the time was like, well, no, 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 no. It's, it's up to us, you know. we could, we got to do it. Yeah. It's us that's got to do it. It's it's ourselves that have got to make a difference. And, uh, you know, it's not – no, it's not political. But it's, no. I, I suppose, as close to political as I might have dared to go. Mm-hmm. At the time, and I, and I and I and I've never wanted to be political. In, in right, nothing wrong with that for other people, not for me. Yeah, no. but um, but that that that's essentially what I what I what I was trying to say. But you know, so many people think it's a love song, uh, and and they think yeah. it's a love song because of the word desire. Mm-hmm. And, and what I'm saying is, well, we've all got these desires. We all just want to have what we want. You know, yeah. that's our desire. But when yeah. you've got it. Well, okay, I've got that's fine. Thanks. Bring it now on to the next thing. Yeah. Now, what else do I want? Now what mm-hmm. else do I want? You know, and that that's what the the desire line was about. But of course, yeah. people are they're, they're welcome to their interpretations, absolutely. And 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 I have written songs, um, many Ned songs that, that I've not at the time thought, I don't know what I'm on about here. I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> I mean, and later on I'll kind of think, well. Either it is about this, and that's mm-hmm. that makes sense. So if someone like yourselves asks me, what's that talking about, John? Oh, well, it's yeah. about this, you know. Yeah. Either it is, or it's a decent fit for that. Right, that's right. my interpretation yeah. of my own words. So yeah. I'll, I'll go with that one for now, you know. Right, yeah. But people are welcome to, to interpret in, in any way. I think that's one of the beauties of, of, of songwriting anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know what, I think, it, I think it's kind of funny because I always like when I'll see uh, Grace Hill Green in a movie and they use the desire line specifically for like a love thing. It always just kick, it makes me laugh because I'm always just like, oh, that's so great because it's subliminally, I'm like, they're getting a totally different message if anybody looks this up later or like listens to whatever. But in this one scene, they just wanted it to be like that. So I always, I always got a kick out of that because I'm like, good, good. Maybe they're, maybe something's sinking in later, you know, when they, when they get. I'm I'm getting a kick because you've you've heard it in a film. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> do you guys not know when your music's in a like do they not tell you? I don't get a little ping on my phone going, so and so has played you. <laughs> no, wow. no, I'm no, gonna no, make no. an app for musicians that let them lets them know every time their song's used in a movie or something. Yeah, yeah. it's coming so- it's coming closer. If you if you get re I think if you get really sad with some of the some of the apps attached to things like Spotify, I think you can. Yeah. Drill, yeah. drill in and see a bit of stuff, but you know, I'm, yeah. I'm happy with the, the email that comes through and says you had you had 30, 35, 40,000 streams on Spotify last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, that it's is nothing, actually a good feeling. You know. Yeah. Do you? Uh, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to ask when. Uh, so you had a a big one was when you did the cover that hit. Uh, so I married an axe murderer, right? How did right. you first like? Who was the first person to contact you and be like, hey? This is like because it had to be. You must have picked up a bunch of people that, as soon as they heard you, they're like, "Okay, this is a unique sound for somebody that wasn't in touch with your music." And like, what was the first like feeling that you got from like a friend saying, "I just saw you in a film right here." It was a really, really odd experience doing that. You know, mm-hmm. really kind of surreal thing that, that 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 occurred. I mean, I don't really know the full story of of why us. I guess they <laughs> just thought buzz band, whatever. <laughs> You know, <laughs> let's let's get groovy with the kids. Um, let's let's try and reach out to the kids. You know, um, mm-hmm. yeah. the the song we I kind of naively thought was going to be in the film. It wasn't. <laughs> it was in the the end credits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So so they invited us to the the London premiere. Um, I watched the film all the way through and thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the original of the song was in it all the time. Right. Yeah. But yeah. And then the, the credits roll and <laughs> and then there it is. There you are. Income income Neds. <laughs> <laughs> Which was bizarre. But what was even more surreal was, was shooting the video. 
you know, uh, with, with Mike Myers and all those comedy actors that, that well, com comedians and comedy actors, mm, all these yeah. people who are really, really famous in, in, in the States. Some I'd heard of, some I hadn't heard of. Mm. And, and, and Mike Myers was, was lovely with us. They, they were all really nice and respectful to us and whatever. Nice. But it was, it was like, we we'd gone to Hollywood all of a sudden. <laughs> we, we, they they dressed us up in stuff um, from a, a costume department that was next door to the ER costume department. So oh, wow. the, the room next to where we went for our old English garb <laughs> was just full of hospital scrubs and blood splattered <laughs> everywhere. And oh my God. Said, can you change quickly? Because because uh, you and I are changing scenes any second now. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, um, oh, John, do you mind having this comedian sat on your knee? I'm like, uh, is there a point where I actually say, uh, yeah, I do? Yeah. I'm a little bit worried about whether this is actually going to look any good or not. Am I, am I being made to look the fool here? Right, right. You know, um, and there were so it was shooting the video was quite uncomfortable at times because I think we were all kind of looking at each other and kind of thinking, is this is this a good idea? Is this is this, this mm, is what you want to be doing? Yeah, should we should we be doing this or not? You know, but everyone <laughs> around's really nice, so you kind of anyway, one of those. But I mean, completely under the radar in the UK, totally oh, wow. under the radar. Yeah. Does that does that bum you out that you were that the UK never acknowledged you the way the US did? You know, I, I I left that experience uncertain about how I felt about it. In fairness, mm -hmm. so I can't, I, a part of me was kind of like, you know, what? I'm sort of glad that we haven't come back, come come back gloriously to the UK and said, "Look, guys, we're in a Hollywood film." Right, you know? right, yeah. Because I, I had that feeling that you know, you, you know, how us Brits, we love we love to destroy people who've got big. We yeah, support them all the way, won't we? Oh, underdog, go on, yeah. Let's get behind yeah. them, get behind them. As soon as they get to the top, it's like. Right, you've had your minute. <laughs> you know, and, and that just, it had that kind of smell about it of, of, of that kind of thing. It's kind of like, yeah, you'd be sitting in the pub and they're like, oh, he th thinks he's the big I am now, yeah. Who does he think he is, eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and especially our, our area that we come from, great, great leveller. You'd oh, come really? back after eight weeks in the States and you've had smoke blown everywhere. Yeah. And uh, you'd come in the pub, you'd be like, you'll wait. You'll wait. Yeah. You're like, there's not even a line. Well. And they're like, you still wait. Yeah. We, don't, we don't care. You, know? yeah. you, you grew up two miles down the road and quite a bonk, you little oik. You'll wait, you wait to get your point because these regulars have been here all the time, by the way, while you were swanning off in America. Yeah. Keeping our business going. Oh yeah. god. And here's you, you come back, oh, you'll be here for a couple of weeks and you'll and then you'll <laughs> off you go again. Yeah, you know. Uh, I kind of like the idea that everybody in England is your disappointed parents. Just like <laughs> only gonna come around for the holidays, huh? They're like a Jewish mother, they're just like you didn't call when you were on the road, you didn't do it. <laughs> like, sorry, I didn't call the local pub. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, was was getting to America like a goal for you guys? Is that something that like because I know like all the you know like uh, um, we've had like some British invasion guys that came and they were like that's the goal. Was that it for you guys too? You know, you, I'm gonna I'm gonna upset lots of people saying this, but um, no, not that's at all. great. Yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 I you know I had I had second thoughts. I mean, mm. uh, I'd kind of heard a, a few things about what it was like to, to tour the states. Yeah, and uh, and my uncool alarm bells were, were ringing left, right, and centre when I'd heard some of the stories. It's just it's just the way that um, industry culture differs in different countries, you know. But, yeah. but there's a stark difference, especially back then. Not so much now, I don't think. But mm -hmm. There's a stark difference because because of radio, because of radio, basically. All right. You roll into a town in, in the states, and you're straight to the radio station, and you're on air, and you're interviewed. And you, you know, you want to be saying the right kind of stuff. You got to be nice to people, mm -hmm. and I, I don't find it hard to be nice to people. Most people are nice to me, and that's easy. That's easily reciprocated. Yeah. That's okay. Right. But you worry, you worry if you if you're me because I worry lots. I'm good at it. Um, <laughs> you worry that you're saying the right stuff. You worry that you're playing the game, but but not playing the game to the point where you're not you anymore. Yeah, it's, you know? 
Yeah. People are people get into other people's music because there's, there's something about that personality in there. It's their, it's who yeah. that person is, you know. Yeah. And should the industry white print that personality out? Well, it could do. It could do with some people. Yeah. It is. It is a bummer when you see that kind of stuff because you can tell immediately, especially now when someone's being genuine or not. Like when they're on or when when they're on the radio or when they're on TV or whatever promoting a thing, and you and it it is a bummer because it's a disconnect because you connect with the music, you connect with the lyrics, and then you see the person and you're like, I don't know anymore. Like, is this guy mm. really being who he is, or you know what? It, it's a weird thing for people who don't understand. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit like it's a bit like footballers in this country now. It's like every last one of them is media trained to within an inch of their life. You know, yeah. And so they do an interview and you don't know who they are. Right, yeah. Because they're just saying what they what they think they ought to say, or they've been told they need to say. You don't know who that person is, really. Yep. It you takes know? all the interesting thing about the artist out of the art. You know what I mean? Like that that used to be the coolest thing. When I was when I was younger and stuff, I loved when somebody just said whatever the fuck they wanted because that's what I wanted to do when I was younger. I just want to be able to say whatever I wanted. And the goal was like, man, if I could if I could use my talent in a way and get out of the, you know, the regular system, I'll, I'll just be able to do whatever. And now it's just like you know, everything's prepackaged. Like even when I see, um, you know, uh, a band or a musician or whatever, whether I like them or not, but when they're on TV and they're like, oh, we had a crazy night in a hotel. And I'm always just like, did you or did your PR team orchestrate it yeah. and nothing really happened? Because it just sounds not as cool. You know what I mean? Not as, not yeah. as uh, it's all manufactured. See, see, see I, I, I really like the early stuff. I mean, I, I, I really, our I early American stuff where, we went on K Rock, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, they had us on Love Line. Oh yeah, yeah. advising people, and right at the end, the guitar, the guitarist told everybody what hotel we were at, and that we were going to have a party that night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's and, I, awesome. and I hid under my bed for three hours. <laughs> the police turned up, and there were like a hundred cans of beer in the swimming pool. And oh um, my god, that's you know, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you would never, you, you know, you couldn't talk about that kind of stuff now. No, you, you'd do it once, and you'd think that was crazy. Yeah, don't really need to do that again now. So that's okay. I'm going to over that now. You know but, what? I may regret even saying this, but I'm going to say it. So, uh, have you ever been to the Stone Pony in Asbury Park? Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I, I went there uh, to hang out with a friend. It, we, he was on the show. His name is Jay Clemens. He's in the you know East Street Band or whatever. It's you know the show ends and we're talking to his manager and I'm waiting to talk to him and stuff like that and kind of hang out. And uh, the staff there, like one of the one of the guys is like, "All right, that's it. You got it. You know you." And my I was there with my manager and they're like, "You guys got to go. It's time. We're closing up. It's eleven fifteen at this point, and like we're wrapping up." And then I was like, oh, no, you know, we're friends with whoever because he was like getting his getting shit together. And and he's like, yeah, I don't care. You can wait outside. So like I'm like, all right, whatever. So we go to wait outside and the manager comes back. and He's like, come on. He takes us to the backstage door. They call him aside and they like scold him for bringing. They're like, what are you guys doing back in here? I'm like, we're here with Mark. We're friends of whoever. And then uh, uh, we get backstage and they came back again. And they were like, guys, we want to go home. And I'm like, you don't work at an office, Max, dude. You're in show. But like, this is like, first of all, it's 1130 at night. It It's a Saturday night. Like, and you're in, you know, this is, this is a, this is a stone pony. This is like rock and roll. You know, this is like, you know, hardcore shit. They fucking didn't give a shit. They wanted to go home. And I was blown away. I'm like, you would think that people were beer cans and it was like, and he, no one was doing blow off the table. We were like do you want to get pizza later? Or you know what I mean? Like it was like, it wasn't even like anybody was doing anything crazy. It was just like packing up their stuff. And like the staff there is like, we want to go. And I'm like, you don't work a regular job though. You don't get to go home at 1130 at night. You get to, you know, I don't get it. Anyway, that was my gripe. But like, that's I our really burning was, bridges segment brought to you by John yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll edit that out. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you love those. It's a bummer. Well, you wouldn't oh. see me because I'd have been hiding under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I would have come down and said hi. <laughs> you underestimate how short I am. That would have been that would have been level for me. I would have yeah, like, John would have seen you under the bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a very I'm I'm a, I'm like five four. I'm uh I, I yeah. That's I'm basically cool. a Keebler elf who decided to do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I was making cookies in a tree. I was having my I was having some success with it, and I was like, you know, it'd be funny. 
Uh, <laughs> that would be a great commercial for the show is you baking cookies in a tree and like telling jokes. And, like, you think that works? I'm going to go try this. And you walk out onto a stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting you direct my HBO special. <laughs> you are forbidden to come near it. You throw the El Fat and just keep on going. <laughs> like, Mary T- like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> just like in the that's a solid reference for people who are younger. Uh, <laughs> like, who's Mary Tyler Moore? Don't worry about it. Oh, it's man. fine. Uh, but yeah, man, I feel like that's, I don't know. I guess that's, I don't know if it's gone now or what, but like people are really, really like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're jaded by it or what, but like, I feel like I missed out on all the fun shit. Well, I feel like John, like the John Penny was in the true rock and roll yeah. era before cell phones and this and the man, right. And the manufactured yeah. personas. Yeah. Like, but those you. were live experiences. Every every last thing was a live experience, wasn't it? It's not like, yeah. hey, hey, I'm I'm here doing this with so and so. Look, yep. it was, yeah, it was like you were there or you weren't there, you know. Yeah, and, um, and, yes. and those are, those are the memories that will go to the grave with you because because sure. you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I saw a thing, um, not a thing, but like you know, um, my mom's a big fan of uh, uh, like the Live Aid, con- like all those bands. So she loves that kind of stuff. We always go see uh, concerts and stuff like that. But um, she uh, she had the Live Aid um, concert thing, and I saw like this thing that I'd never seen. Like Bono was, um, you know, doing one of his songs, and his guitar uh, guy was like doing a solo or whatever, and he got down off the stage because he just saw a fan and he wanted to bring them up on stage. But, you know, Live Aid had all those brackets and the concert and everything yeah. was kind of in the way. But he he was really cool about it. He got, like, the staff to help bring this woman on and got down off the stage and went to go get her. And I thought, if that was today, somebody would have tweeted, like, can you believe the staff only got paid, blah, 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 and had to do all that because Bono wanted to. Instead of it being a genuine yeah. moment where everybody pitched in, yeah. which it totally was, I feel like if it happened today, they would have been like, because Bono had to go after a fan, and it's like, oh my god, it was such a cool moment. Yeah. Well, you know, we've we've, we've all got opinions, haven't we? Like, like, yeah, we've, yeah. All got, we've all got orifices. It doesn't mean we want to hear them. Yeah, yeah exactly. All yes. the time about everything. Yeah, you know? exactly. I'm sure, I'm sure people don't want to know what I think about. I do. A gazillion <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. um, I, that was a what? great roundabout way of doing the, uh, of, like, I, I'll say, like, opinions are like assholes, but he said it so kindly. That was so British. He did. He it was so did. nicely said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. <laughs> did you get up a lip and all that? You know. <laughs> did you were you were you kind of starstruck when you met other people like um, that you were fans of? Do you do you have that in you to go up to? um people that you kind of admired when you got to tour and stuff like that or did you just kind of hang no, back I, mean, I, I, I was i was really shy about that kind of thing yeah um, and and people say oh you know we can get you know we'll get you into a party so and so's gonna be there and, we'll, and, and i'll be like mm, no it's all right oh, wow. it's all right I'll, mm. and I, i'd be i'd be really worried about meeting heroes like, yeah like, i found it a bit worrying i didn't yeah. have it's kind of 50 50. I mean, it is down to who people are, you know, and people are entitled mm-hmm. to be who they are. Yeah, and, and if they're grumpy, they're grumpy, you know, that's that's fine, yeah, yeah um, totally. But, um, yeah, so I've, I had some good experiences with, with some people, some not so good experiences with other people. Yeah. Um, but I, I never, I never kind of thought, right, gotta go and do that and get stuck in with meeting X, Y, and Z. No, yeah, it was, you know, it's kind of like. That's that's kind of like an, an addition on to what you are, but what, what I was that was that that guy who wrote the songs with the band and then went and strutted around like an idiot on stage for for half an hour, and then <laughs> went and had a swift drink and that's me, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's Boy. cool. <laughs> no, 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 that's 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 awesome though. I always wonder if people get starstruck. Like if there was somebody that like you that you would want to see you perform on stage, you know, whether it was Ned's or Spares. But you look down in the audience, you're like, oh my God, that guy's here. Like, do you know who it would be? They could is be anyone, they could be passed away at this point. Is too. anyone living? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, if 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 Bowie was in the audience, yeah. Nice. I, I, and everyone's gonna say Bowie, aren't they? But, but no, but I really mean Bowie. Yeah, um, yeah. Um yeah. if Julian Cope was in the audience from oh, Teal yeah. Explodes, yeah. If Ian McCulloch was in the audience, oh awesome. Yeah, yeah. That that that'd, that'd switch me on. That'd get yeah. the adrenaline pumping. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's what it's all about, you know. It's all about adrenaline. That's, yeah, that's, that's the that's the best drug on the planet. 
he says unqualified having not tried any others but you know um <laughs> why do you need anything else but adrenaline and and, and, and alcohol I, I don't really yeah yeah. Not knocking people who do. That's, no, know, no, no. Each to his own. But, um... No, I know what you mean. And it's, <laughs> yeah. but it is, it's, it's an awesome feeling when you go on stage. Like that's the thing I think that everybody kind of missed the most who performs is like, yeah, yeah, you can do a Zoom thing and you could, you could sing online or whatever, but uh, the audience pumps you up when you're out in front of them. It, it's the whites of the eyes, isn't it? You know, yeah. yeah. It's it, it, it has to have proximity. Has yeah. to have that because it's a two way thing, isn't it? A gig. It, it it really is such a two way thing. Mm -hmm. if, it's, yeah. if it's done well, yeah, you, know, you you're not you're not like a, a a preacher giving a sermon where everyone stand nicely and listen. You mm -hmm. know, you're feeding back off one another, aren't you? That's that's the whole point of a of a live performance, and it don't work through Zoom. I'm sorry, but it no, just I know. You know? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a weird thing. It was nice to connect with people from, you know, wherever that you probably wouldn't have gotten in touch with otherwise. But it was also like, please come and see us live. <laughs> yeah. You know, that'd be yeah. nicer, too. I think the best way like I could put it is like a real gig. When you're done with it, the the feeling that overwhelms you is almost like post sex. Right. Like where it's like, ah, like that giant release and you feel like overwhelmingly calm. Whereas yeah. on Zoom, it's kind of like zoom sex it's not gonna be the same animal but it's like you're connecting but it's not the same like that ah feeling when you're done right no it's just like i'm with them yeah <laughs> and we're done. It's over. yeah <laughs> what, what's, what, what's great tom is when you were talking about what it would be like on zoom you froze for like two seconds <laughs> you're like and on zoom that was perfect <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. Dude, I, I've got to ask you the big three questions that we ask every guest that's coming on, but I want to thank you for being here with us, man. It, it was uh, it was great getting to talk to you and, and talk to you about the new stuff. Been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Um, thank you. So the, the first three, uh, the only three, I'll get it right one day, uh, <laughs> is the first one is if you go back in time and talk to your younger self, what piece of advice would you give yourself to help you out today? Don't sweat the small stuff. Nice. Yeah. Just yeah, get on with it. Get on with it because it all it all comes out in the wash. Nice. Yeah. Great advice. Um, second question is what had to end in your life, good or bad, in order for you to wind up where you are today? Oh. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I, I guess ambition to be an actor had to mm. it had to stop. But but a momentum of being in a band kind of steamrolled it anyway. You know. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, that's that. That was a. That's actually a good point. When you got into the band and stuff like that, did you still feel like uh, you wanted to do some acting? Did you think that maybe music was a lead in to more acting, or did you just abandon it and were like, "No, this is where I'm supposed to be." You know what? I think what what happened was it was it was such a great healer for me because I, I stopped hating myself so much. Oh, I say nice. so much. <laughs> we all still have a special little place in our, in, our, in our heads where we despise ourselves, don't we? Absolutely. You know? But um, I think I, st I started hating myself much less. And, oh, um, and you know, being a singer in a band, is, it's, it is acting at certain points in time. Oh, yeah. what, what it's doing is it's kind of multiplying you by 10, you know, and, mm. and you're much more in control of that. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, and I guess you don't have to read anybody else's writing either. Like, if you're an actor, you gotta you gotta perform the way the script or the or the director or somebody else does it to you. But if you're in a band, it's all you know, it's you guys. Yeah, and, and in my heart of hearts, I know I was crap at accents, so I was never going to <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, and the third question is uh, tied into the show, which I love. So, if this was a genuine dystopia. Um, like alien zombies, uh, comet heading toward Earth, climate change hits, whatever, volcanoes erupting. Uh, what would be your epic death? How would you want to go out? Oh, how would I want to go out? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my. Oh, my word. Um, <laughs> swift and loud. Oh, yeah. that's a great way. Yeah. I want, I want something big to just smithereens me that, that everyone feels like, whoa, that's John gone then. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love that you use the word smithereens. I used it the other day and I felt like, oh, should I even be using this word? That's a great word. Great word. Great smithereens word. is awesome. I'm grateful for, for all these wonderful words that have, have uh, managed to work into my head. Yeah. <laughs> <lucky aren't> they? <laughs> that's great, man. Okay. The other, you know what I love? I love the expression, uh, wheel, that's not in my wheelhouse or that's in my wheelhouse. I love 
a wheel. I don't even know what a wheelhouse is, but I like picturing this thing that people have that they're like, that's uh, that's actually right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's not in my wheelhouse ending this show. Well, uh, <laughs> every every I swear to God, I think it must be the bane of Tom's existence because I'm always just like I in the very beginning when we used to have guests on, I Tom would be like, "You just fucking ended it, like you just you didn't say." So I'd be like, "That's what I, brought me on air, John." It is, <laughs> because it really I was is. like, "I got to help get us in and out of this stuff smooth, like I, transition." I'm, I'm not a good I'm not a good like uh, intro guy or outro guy. I'm really fun in the middle of everything. Like even when I do my stand up stuff, like it always sounds like I've already started a conversation. I'm I'm not really like I just I don't know what it is. I can't I even now I'm like I should be like, hey, so thanks for do, doing joining us. But I like I don't I'm know. I'm just picturing you doing stand up and you walk on stage and you're like, then this guy said, and you're like, what? What? What, what was the whole first time of that joke? Yeah, I, I really genuinely like, because you know what? When I was a kid, I remembered like the fun uncle. Like if there was like a house thing going on when I was a kid, it was always the the guy who would come in still wearing his jacket. You knew he wasn't staying long. He'd grab a piece of cake, tell a quick few funny stories, and then leave. And that's what I like to do. And, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not a good promoter. I don't like being like, hey, and check us out on the... It just sounds yeah. like I'm lying. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just don't. But uh, yeah. But I uh, really, I am. I thank you for coming on, man. Because it's I. I love your stuff, and I'm glad you're making new music. And I hope yeah, to come see you live. I really do. Like I don't know if you're gonna come. I don't know. Are, are you allowed to come to the states now? Is there a travel ban lifted or? Um, you know, I've I haven't even looked into it. But oh, um, he disappeared. Oh, oh, he <laughs> He's the same as you, John. He just takes off on us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Swift and loud. <laughs> can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can still hear you. Yeah. yeah. It, it didn't quite kill me. No, it didn't kill you. No, no. no. You're, you're still hearing the voice. Ah, uh -huh. you're a voice now. I don't, I don't know what's happened. I certainly haven't unplugged my own camera. That's uh... no. I think it's just a little button on the bottom that says start cam, stop cam. I think something hit the stop cam. Oh yeah, yeah. You might have to. There, there you go. go. <laughs> that was. And there hilarious. I am, the palest man in rock. <laughs> Um, a great way to I know about, sorry, I don't know about the states whether we, we whether we can or can't. It's kind of it's it's a dream I, I I haven't entertained yet, but we we just got to follow our nose and see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if people want us, there's a good chance we would. You know, yeah. right. I might but have a name at the Stone Pony. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. Might work out. Uh, <laughs> but they will be on tour coming up in the UK. In the UK, yes, in the UK. That's right. right. In May, we're going to do five dates in May. So uh, awesome. look us up. And, uh, Absolutely, yeah. And then cool. the album drops in April, right? Yep. So the album will be out on the 29th of April. Awesome. Exciting. Yeah. Make sure you go so check all, that out. All those radio interviews I did, it's just kind of, can you see how natural it is? No, no, no. <laughs> you feed them all. You, you serve them all and knock them down. There you go. <laughs> love balls. Oh, God. I love it, man. Thank you so much, man. It was great meeting you, really. Yeah, you man. Too. Such Thank a pleasure. You guys. Thanks yep. so much. We'll definitely be listening for the music and hope to see you soon. Talk to you soon. Have a great one. Peace. Bye-bye. Tonight.